welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Karen Sundaram. At UBS, we recognize the impact that diversity, equity, and inclusion can have on the success and long-term health of any organization. Today, I'm pleased to welcome our special guest, Rafe Resendez, co-founder and portfolio manager for Applied Finance. Rafe has more than 30 years of experience in capital markets and corporate valuation consulting. Rafe also believes wholeheartedly in the power of harnessing diverse perspectives to drive results. Rafe, welcome to the studio. We're it's great to be here. We're so happy to have you with us. So I have heard some phenomenal things about your professional journey. We often say in my team that everyone has a story that impacts how they invest, whether it's their time, their money, or their ideas. We would love to hear about your path to leadership, including any personal experiences that have influenced how you have built your business. Oh, thank you, sure. Uh, I think one of the things that's unique about applied finance is as an asset manager, we started in a, in a rather unorthodox manner. We were management consultants. Uh, my the co-founding partner and myself, we literally started the company in my basement in Chicago. We thought there was a better way to think about how to analyze companies and, and determine what they're worth. So we spent eight months building our model. And as two research geeks, we then had this product and we didn't know how to sell it. <laughs> so we started to just call anybody we knew. And uh, back in the days of answering machines, I know a lot of people, Karen, I don't think you probably know what an answering machine I is. Do, I do, Okay, wonderful. Uh, most people don't these days, but we had just returned from a long marketing trip throughout the Midwest, came back to our office, everything was dark except for a little blinking red light in the corner, turned it on and it turned out to be a partner from Arthur Anderson that wanted to build a consulting group within Anderson to compete with the likes of McKenzie, Bain, BCG, so we started our partnership with them, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. Unfortunately, Anderson had some problems, so they were 95% of our revenue stream at the time. We had built a 50-person group within Anderson globally, helping CEOs understand what's priced into their, into their company stock price and, and what their economic performance is. So then we began selling it as an independent research firm. And from there, we transitioned into asset management, which is where we are now. And we've had a, an amazing journey. In 2016, we had 100 million under management. Now we're coming up close to 3 billion. I think that's great, because you talk about hard work, hustle, resilience, and kind of reinventing yourself. So one of the other things I know you and I talked about was just diversity and diverse perspectives. I think you have a very interesting take on diversity and one that brings in a broad array of perspectives. So I'd love if you could just tell us, how do you think about diversity and how has it been a differentiator for your business? Sure. Um, one of the things that I'm really grateful to Anderson about is the experience working with one of their senior partners, Gary Holdren. And one of the things he taught me early on in my career was whenever you find smart, talented people, keep them. And uh, I like to think of applied finance as being sort of a blind company. You know, we really don't care your race, your religion, your politics, your sexual orientation. We don't care. We just care about the person. And, you know, in the 27 years we've been in business, the average partner in our firm has been with us 17 years. Uh, almost 50% of the company are first generation Americans from a broad background. 30% uh, of the native languages in applied finance are not English. So it's, I think the, our ability to have cast such a wide net for talent and people has been one of our core strengths. And I think this all kind of comes back to when we had our discussion, I think a lot of diversity comes back to perception and being able to see through an initial impression of anyone or anything. And that was one of the things, you know, I have two quick examples for us as a firm on how I think diversity and perspective has helped us so much. One relates back to UBS and bringing us on board as a, as a preferred provider of one of your strategies. It'd be very easy for a firm like UBS to overlook a small firm like Applied Finance, 17 people. Um, we have an extraordinary track record since, since the inception of our strategies in the top 1%, but we're a small firm. And for a firm like UBS, there's a lot of, you're, you're used to working, the team here is used to working with much larger companies. And I think it's a huge credit to Rachel Lee and the amount of work she put in to really dig down 
below the surface and below perceptions of a small firm and what we could really bring to the table. So that's one area where that, that I think that, that the notion of diversity and perception has affected our firm so much. Another deals with one of the largest pensions in the world. We recently were awarded a, a multi-hundred million dollar mandate from them. Congratulations. Thank you. And again, I think we are the only small firm they've ever really worked with. And it, also they're in a different country. And so there were so many perception issues that they had to overcome to get to know us, um, for us to ultimately succeed and, and win there. It really illustrates, I think, the importance of always digging below the surface of what you initially see to really understand and get to know people. And that's been the approach we've always tried to do with hiring people and maintaining and growing partners internally. No, I love it because so you're really making diversity about the person and each person has a story, whether it's where they grew up, the language they speak, the city they live in now, the college they attended, and it is all something that they can actually bring to work and then when you bring it together in a team, you have this amazing diverse organization. We had, I think at one point, uh, we were like a mini United Nations. We had an internship program and in this little internship program in the Central Valley of California, we had uh, someone from Taiwan, from Bulgaria, from mainland China, and from Turkey, <laughs> which is just, an, I mean, for the small Central Valley, it was just an amazing mix of people in the office. And that's carried through. Some of those have stayed with us. Some of those people have stayed with us. In fact, one of the interns leads the, the Valuation 50 strategy with, with another gentleman that we met decades ago at Arthur Anderson. He happens to be from India. So it's, it's uh, all of these opinions, I think, end up making an amazing stew yeah. of research and, and results for our firm. It's really pretty spectacular. Well, thank you for sharing that. And before we wrap up, a few final questions. So can you share both what has made you most proud of your achievements so far? I know that's a hard question. As well as kind of what excites you most about the future, because you've obviously continued to reimagine success. So where does applied finance go from here and what should we expect from you, Ray? Great, thank you. Um, I think one of the things professionally, just focusing on that, that has made me most proud is when we developed the economic margin framework 27 years ago, uh, we put together what we thought was a very structured theory-based approach to understanding what companies are doing. 27 years later, we've done 20 million valuations. I think it's, it's I don't think there's a firm in the world. I mean, I, I like to call us the world's biggest small firm. I don't think there's a firm in the world that has the depth of experience valuing companies that we do. And I think what's so gratifying is we're starting to see significant global players see our track record, start to get to know our story and our research, and get to know our people and have the confidence to work with us. And I think, where are we going? Uh, I think we have a lot of work to do to help a lot of firms invest better. And I think by investing better, we can make so many people's lives better, which is, it's a great, it's a greedy win-win, which is what my father, one of the things, another leadership perspective that I always bring to the table is from my dad, and he's always instilled in me, try to win-win, because then you don't deal with a zero-sum world, which I think is awesome. No, I love it. It's like you can do well and do good at always. the same time. That's, that's and always the goal. It's not a trade-off. So thank you so much, Rafe, for joining me and for sharing your story. For our audience, for more information, please visit our website at ubs.com forward slash views. For, you can also follow UBS on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also find past UBS trending episodes on demand by visiting the UBS YouTube channel or our website, ubs.com forward slash studios. And as always, if you have any questions about your portfolio, please speak with a financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Karen Sundaram. Have a great day and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending.